My name is Tanish. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, foundation models for medicine, but more importantly, open foundation models. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm, as, as we're all aware, there's been a lot of progress in the, in the field of AI, especially with the rise of generative AI and foundation models and also multimodality. So of course, that kind of started out with um, you know, ChatGPT as one of the uh, first very popular foundation models that took in text and uh, pr produced responses to text. Uh, of course, you know, there have been many other examples of generative AI before that, but I think this is kind of the, the, the first very popular and very successful example here. Um, and people have been using these foundation models to build a variety of assistance and tools for a variety of domains. I think a very good example of that is the uh, GitHub Copilot, which was uh, uh, an assistant developed for programmers. But of course, there are assistants in other domains and tools in other domains based on generative AI in domains like finance and education and uh, law. Uh, but yeah, I think there are lots of great opportunities for applying generative AI to all these different domains. Um, I think another interesting area is the rise of multimodal models, uh, models that can take in uh, not just text, but also images. So there's like the clip model, there's also the lava models, there's a variety of these models. And also models that can generate not just text, but also images. Uh, so that's, you know, stable diffusion is a good example of this. Uh, you can generate audio, video. So there's a lot of interesting developments in the, re in, in, in the space recently. And I, I think, you know, I talked about there's so many different applications in all these different domains. The application I'm most interested in is medicine, as you can can guess from my background. Um, and I think it's important to ask if these uh, foundation models are relevant to medicine. Uh, some of these models don't seem to have a lot of medical knowledge, unfortunately. So for example, this is a stable diffusion model and some of the generations where you can see maybe it has like, uh, it's a very unreal unrealistic depiction of some of these uh, x-rays or uh, microscope slides or things like this. It kind of has a general idea, but it's not very realistic. So some of these models don't have a very good understanding. Of course, models like ChatGPT, we know, do have some understanding because we've heard of patients using it to ask questions and doctors, you know, using it to help with their with their uh, administrative tasks and things like this. So there is some knowledge in some of these models, but there's still also the opportunity for specialist models for uh, medical tasks. And so this has been a question that people have been trying to ask is if we do need specialist models or if we just have this all that data in the general training of the models and if that's enough. So some, some papers have suggested that, yes, a specialist model gives better performance, while other papers show that, oh, just fine t uh, prompt engineering GPT-4 uh, gets state of the art on pretty much all these tasks. So it's still an open question as to whether or not we need to have a, a fine-tuned model for medical data. And I think that we do because of the differences between medical data and natural data. And I think looking at these medical images is a good example of that, where you can see how these medical images are quite distinct from natural images. So for example, in the example of the stable diffusion, which is an image generation model, it's mostly trained on these natural images. Now it's no surprise why it's not doing well on some of these medical images. Um, so I think overall, you know, because of these differences in medical and natural data, uh, there is a need for uh, medical specific foundation models. And there are a variety of different applications of these sorts of foundation models. You can imagine them being used to answer questions about patient health records, look at uh, medical images and you know, provide diagnosis, all these various different applications. So I think there's a real importance to develop these um, um, medical foundation models that can solve a, a, a lot of these different tasks. The, the, the thing that I'm most interested in, though, is that I, I believe that open foundation models is actually uh, the future for applying generative AI in medicine. And there's a variety of reasons why I think this. So of course, when you have open foundation models, and what I mean by that is that you are releasing the weights of the models, you're providing all the information about how the model is trained, the data sets, all that information is you know, available. Uh, by, by doing so, this enables a few things. For example, it enables local deployment of the models, uh, and that allows you know, for privacy-first deployment as well, which is very important in healthcare scenarios like in hospital setting where you want to keep the patient's information private. Uh, on top of that, it builds complete transparency uh, and it builds trust uh, from you know, doctors to regulatory bodies like the FDA. They will want complete transparency. On top of that, uh, there are, you know, by having access to this uh, open model that is static and unchanging, uh, as opposed to some of these proprietary models where it does keep changing uh, on the back end, you, know, you have a consistent understanding of the model behavior and you, know, you, you, you can trust the model output more. Uh, on top of that, uh, also there, uh, these models can be customized to uh, various populations as well. For example, uh, if you want to train on a specific hospital demographic to improve the performance for that hospital data, you can do that if you have access to the original weights of the model. So that's why I founded MedArc. 
And Medoc's focus is basically to develop these open models and do so in a collaborative fas fashion. Uh, and yeah, basically our, we're developing foundation models for medicine. And our approach is to basically uh, train these models and share these models and the data sets and how these models are trained and publish papers about them. And overall, just build a community for the medical AI research uh, uh, field. So we have a few projects that we've been working on. Uh, for example, here we were working with, in collaboration with Stanford to fine tune stable diffusion on chest x-rays. This allows us to generate synthetic chest x-rays, which could be used for either medical education uh, applications or also developing uh, synthetic data to train downstream diagnostic classifiers. We've also trained another chest x-ray multimodal model, which can take in the chest x-rays and you can ask questions about the chest x-rays. So for example, it could generate radiology reports for a chest x-ray and provide diagnosis. So this is also done with, in collaboration with Stanford. We've also been working on, in the neuroscience space a bit where we, for example, do this mind reading project where we are actually taking in uh, the fMRI uh, brain signal from a patient and reconstructing what the patient is seeing just from the brain activity of the patient. And we're utilizing the latest advances in generative AI and multimodal models in order to be able to do that. And we can see here that our results uh, uh, significantly beat the state of the art. And we can see that our reconstructions are very close to the actual images that the person was seeing. And this is just coming from the brain activity. And we're able to do that using latest diffusion models, these clip multimodal models. And by utilizing these advances, we're able to do this. And we're also improving upon it and uh, developing new methods that allow us to use even less data to be able to accomplish this. And, and finally, we've also been exploring uh, language models. You know, I, I show these other examples because I wanted to show that generative AI is not just about language models. Uh, there's more to generative AI than just language models. But I think this is also a very interesting space to work in in terms of uh, you know, building uh, language models to process clinical notes and medical articles and all these sorts of applications. Uh, and uh, we haven't trained our own models yet, and that's something that we're working on currently. But we've also been evaluating the current uh, landscape as well. And what we've been seeing is that these open models are actually starting to catch up to the proprietary models in terms of performance. And uh, I think this is really exciting because one of the complaints about open models is that, oh, it's not as good as these proprietary models. Uh, but this is starting not to be true, even in the case of, of the medical field. So I think it's really exciting that now we have these open models that are catching up. And we also hope to be able to train some of these models as well. So in conclusion, I think that a generative AI has a lot of potential in medicine, and not just with language models, but also outside of language models. And I also think, more importantly, that open models are the future for generative AI in medicine and healthcare. So with that, uh, you know, I, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, we have a website, our Discord community, with lots of great researchers there. Reach out on, you can reach out on LinkedIn and on Twitter. And yeah, thank you for your time.